Hi, David. How you doing? Mute. Hey, you, can you hear me, Aaron? I can hear you, I think. But I think you're muted, Aaron. How about now? Now I can hear you. And there I am. There's there me. you are. <laughs> you're alive. <laughs> Got people struggling to join already, sending me emails. Is there a call in number? I asked David, I don't know. I was expecting WebEx, so I clicked on it and it popped up on Zoom. I'm like, oh. I know. <laughs> I'm I'm fine with. I hear it's yeah, we are trying out Zoom now, stepping away um, from WebEx. So this is my first time running one. So hopefully it goes smooth. I mean the link the link came popped up for me really easily. So yeah. yeah. I've sent out the link to several people. Well, we can give people some extra time as well. Okay. Make sure I have everything up. Yep. Two attendees now. There's Kelly and John. John Newman from at t And Kelly from um, J5 with Verizon. Hey, David, I noticed one of the attendees has their hand up. How would we make it so they can we can talk, see what they need? I think you're on mute. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I want to see if you have the same capabilities or not. Okay. Um, yeah, let's try it. Click on the attendees. If you hover over, does it give you that option to allow to talk? Mm -mm. No. Okay. It must just be me then. So I'll make sure to be um, letting people talk. It was John Newman, right? That had the hand raised. I think it was Kelly, but oh. or John has her hand up now, so you can probably unmute him. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, Kelly. Hey, John, your hand's up. If you unmute yourself, you can speak. This is Kelly. Hi, Hi Kelly. guys. Can you hear me? I, I I apologize. I was trying to lower my hand. To <laughs> <laughs> not be a pest. I was raising my hand because I wanted to know if you guys could hear me. We can hear you, yes. Or see me, or I can't see myself or attendance. So it's not like I would normally, you know, you could see them on the side of your screen usually. Yeah. but I'm not sure if I've got my camera closed or open. <laughs> I think you have to be moved to a panelist to be able to use your camera. Is that correct, David? Okay. Yeah. To a what? We would have to oh, move you to a panelist. Me. Yeah. I don't need to be on if you don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not, but I wanted to make sure I was if I was. Um, yeah. During the applicant's presentations, I can move um, whoever uh, needs to present or turn on their camera to panelists during that time. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm good now. I'm fine. 
and I'm just gonna, so do I, how do I mute myself? Oh, there it is. I can see it. I will mute myself in the meantime. Yeah. And, and if, you, if you'll unraise your hand too, just so we know that if you have a, if you have a question, we want to make sure we can find you. So there we go. Thanks guys. Thank you. This brings me back to the COVID times when you or Wayne or whatever to go through each person and say, can you speak please to make sure your audio is working? <laughs> I know. I We finally got good at WebEx kind of, but it was a very complex program to try and run these meetings on. I... Very short lived too. It was only two years. Yeah, you just think that there were so many companies that were coming with the same technology that they would also have found a way to simplify it where people like Zoom and did or Microsoft Teams, you know. We had a contract with Cisco. <laughs> That's probably true. All right, we got about one more minute to wait here. Looks like Craig has his hand up. Yeah, Craig, I just unmuted you. Oh, there we go. Okay, I just want to make sure that I, I have the ability to be heard. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. I will put my hand down. Okay, thanks, Greg. So Aaron, did, did everyone okay. that reached out to you, have they been able to get logged on or? Um, I'm waiting on Bethany from AT&T. She was having some issues um, with the computer app so i said try the try it on her phone um if someone who knows bethany better maybe valerie or john can help walk her through how to connect um the, um, the webinar might not have been started yet either i didn't actually um start the webinar until like around 4 50 so if they tried to join prior to that, it wouldn't have let them in. So maybe just trying to go in again might work. Let me call her. Yeah, let's just, I'm gonna say, let's push it to start to 505 just to make sure. I don't wanna, I would rather have everybody here if we can. Well, I called, but maybe she didn't recognize my number. All right, we'll just give it a few more minutes and then we'll get started. Um, Craig, I think you can unmute yourself. Oh, there I am actually. I'm, getting, I'm trying to give her a call as well. He did not answer. Craig, are you expecting anyone else from your end? 
I see no. Charlie. On the team. No, Charlie and myself. Okay. And then uh, Lucas, Saunders, and Will, are you, are they with AT&T or with um, Verizon? Lucas is with Verizon. And I'm not sure that AT&T is going to be on this call. Uh, okay. I think I think Kelly can speak to it. Hello. Speak to the application. So. Correct. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. I I just tried calling Bethany and sending her an IM, and I am getting no response. So, like the her phone call went directly to voicemail. So I'm. I see her. Um... A BW925A. Uh, yes, our... that is her. That's her email. Okay. All right, we're, we're going to get this started at um, 505, as previously mentioned. So we're almost there. Mute. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Okay, this is Bethany. I'm sorry. I had audio problems trying to get in. Can you guys hear me? Still hear me? We can hear you now. We are loud okay. and clear. Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry, I, I had problems getting in. Sorry, I keep getting, I've been kicked out twice now. I'm hoping that has been solved. So I apologize for the delay on that. <laughs> so are we okay now? Can you hear me, David, Aaron? We're good? Okay, so hopefully the end of that. So um, uh, my name is John Anderson. I'm the appeals hearing officer tonight from representing the Salt Lake City Planning Division. I'll just kind of lay out how this hearing is gonna go today. We're gonna have uh, the planner make a presentation. Um, and then we'll ask the applicant if they have a presentation to make to, they'll have their time and opportunity to do that. We will then um, open a public hearing and allow anybody from the public to speak if any are in attendance. Um, then we can have a brief discussion and then we will find a, or make a motion. So I will turn the time over to Aaron to um, begin. Thank you, John. And you can see the screen. Great. So this is a request for condition use approval for um, a wireless telecommunica telecommunication facility, um, interim, temporary, um, but it is a request for a, a wireless facility at the 675 East, um, 500 South in, in Salt Lake. Uh, specifically, the request is for conditional use approval of a 121 foot here or there um, wireless facility and staff is recommending that we approve approval with a condition to ensure that the tower is temporary in nature and I will get into more details in my presentation. First location of the facility. They're currently the facilities are located on top of the Xerox building, which is the structure here in the uh, southeast corner of the, the project area. The proposal is to move this facility to the uh, the northwest corner of the property for the time of construction and that it would be a temporary location, a stopgap until completion of uh, the Trolley North student housing development. Um, so yeah, some background. This Trolley North student housing development is currently under review by the HLC. It, a public hearing is scheduled for June 1st and at 5.30 at City Hall. Um, there is currently a several cellular facilities on top of the Xerox building, like I pointed out, and an interim location is needed between demolition of that Xerox building and completion of the final 
Trolley North development. Uh, staff worked with the applicants to find a solution that would best work for all parties and a stealth tower was recommended, but this is the type of facility this and this height is what is needed to maintain the same level of service between demolition and installation. Um, a facility shorter than this, I've been told, would have a reduction in the, the service area and the, the level of service that the carriers have in the area. Um, so specifically the proposal um, would be a temporary antenna structure on top of a stair tower, as you saw in the photo before. Um, that stair tower would be incorporated into the final Trolley North development. And then once completion, once the Trolley North development is completed, those antennas will be moved to stealth facilities on top of Trolley North as disguised as elevator or stairwell bulkheads. And I've just provided an illustration from the plans for the Trolley North project that what they will look like there, just blocks on top that would fit the description of a um, elevator bulkhead and is a permitted um, obstruction to the maximum height. One conversation that has come up throughout this process is the nature of the recommended condition. Um, in the initial report, staff recommended remove, recommends removal of the facility if Trolley North is not completed or the project is abandoned. The original recommendation time, timeline was two years from the issuance of the record of decision letter. Um, that was based on a typical construction timeline, but um, after discussion with the applicant and the scale of the project, uh, it became clear that a longer timeline is necessary. Um, the applicants have also provided an alternate condition that is more in line with their wants and desires. And I've kind of included a summary of it on the next page, but the applicants can go more into detail about their requested um, condition there. Specifically, the change they want, they would include the, the three-year period or 36 months. Um, but the difference would be instead of the condition use permit becoming void and removal of the structure being required, if the project is not completed within three years, it would be um, if the um, building permit um, petition for the um, Trolley North development is issued within that three year time, then the time timeline to be to remove the structure would be would be void at that point. That's the, the language they're looking for and they can go into more detail during that presentation. But staff's recommendation is to approve with the recommended condition extending the two year period to three years. And that concludes my presentation. And I'm happy to pass on to um, the applicant, applicants who are Valerie and Kelly, but they may defer to other people who are at this meeting. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, we'll give the applicant an opportunity to present. I don't know if you have an official presentation, if you just wanted to speak to us a little bit about the project. I would prefer it if we can keep it to one or two speakers rather than everybody trying to speak at one time, just knowing that can become chaotic. Um, so is there a representative who wants to start off? If there is, if you want to raise your hand. I... And if that's Valerie, because she's got her hand up right now, so. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I was just moving my mouse around. Oh, um, you're just fine. Um, you know, there are just a couple. Um, you know, Erin covered what um, our concern about having um, AT and T having 36 months for this um, the CUP application being active. Um, that was a concern we had, which um, we spoke with him about earlier today. Other than that, everything else that he covered um, is is all I have. There's nothing more for me to add at this point. Okay. Did anybody from your team need to make an official presentation or anything like that? Because if you do, this would be your time. If not, I can. I do have a few questions for the for your group. So, I I, I don't have anything. Okay. I don't have anything either. Okay. And that, that's just fine. There's no no need, no requirement. I just um, want to make sure you have that opportunity. Um, 
so I, I do have a question. Um, if, if, for example, this was denied, what kind of impact does it have on the local service? Anybody feel free to answer that one. So, well, I think I think uh, John, I can, I'm happy to answer and and yeah, uh, please. and Verizon representatives jump in, correct or add. But I think the the ability for our larger project to move forward has to fully accommodate AT and T and Verizon maintaining mm -hmm. the level of service that they have. Right? We don't want to cause interruption in cell service in downtown Salt Lake City due to the development of our project. And in order for AT&T to maintain that cell service without, without any interruptions, um, this, the, this, they need this height and they need this tower to be in place, right? The whole intention here of, the, of us building our stair tower first and getting them on top of it is to make sure that there is zero interruption with their service uh, throughout the development of the larger uh, apartment project. So without this, application being approved, we would have no path to doing that. Sure. Okay. I understand. I mean, I'm, I have a cell phone user as well, and I'm downtown Salt Lake right now, so I understand the need. I'm just curious if, you know, if it's a substantial impact, if it's a small impact, um, I guess any impact at some point will seem substantial to someone. Um, you know, right. I would like to okay. add that this site does provide E911 services, so that is really the concern of there's any interruption to the, the this facility for AT and T. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this will definitely impact the service providers within the surrounding area. So it's really critical that there's no uh, interruption um, in any of the services during any of the transition from moving from one position to another, or you know, while the buildings being demo demolished and then the new one being built. So that's really the biggest concern. Yeah, I, would, I would just add on, I would, I would uh, pat ourselves on the back for taking, taking as much effort and spending as much resources and putting as much money towards doing this. Again, all in the effort to make sure that those services don't go down. Sure. So. Okay. Well, I appreciate that, Craig and Valerie. Um, so at this time, I'm gonna open up the public hearing if there's anybody in attendance that would like to speak on this item, if you'll raise your hand, um, indicating you'd like to speak. Um, I see John Newman, your hand is up. Did you want to speak on this matter? Uh, yes, please. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, we're on, um, I, work uh, legal counsel for AT&T. Uh, are you able to hear me uh, clearly? Yes. yes. Thank you. Very clear. Thank you. And thank you. And also to uh, uh, your excellent planner, Aaron, for his availability to, to visit with us. Uh, and uh, the, I thought it would be helpful to explain the reasoning for the, for the requested uh, revisions uh, to the term on the temporary facility. AT&T is in the presentation, you see that the existing facility is located on a building that is ultimately going to be demolished. So I believe the intent of the developer here is to have the two carriers go on to, uh, go on to the temporary tower off, with the goal of it being temporary, then demolish the uh, building that contains our existing cell site and then rebuild uh, the Trolley North development. If that all goes to plan, and we hope it does, we understand that that Craig and his partner do other projects in, in Salt Lake City and enjoy a favorable reputation with the city. And uh, But certainly from at and standpoint, we cannot control uh, the rebuild of the Trolley North project. And uh, we are trying to accommodate uh, Craig and his partners by a voluntary relocation, but we don't want to have an interruption in service. Uh, we know that we can go to the, the temporary cell site and we'll do that in accordance with the approval that the, and design that the city might grant here. And uh, with the goal of eventually going on to that uh, 
new structure in a fully stealth environment. But AT&T can't build that. Uh, that will be Craig and his partner's responsibility. And But once we do go, uh, obviously, if they demolish that building, we don't have a home to go back to. And that's what we're concerned about with the limited term uh, in the proposed condition is that if for some reason uh, the, the developer did not build the trolley, new trolley project, we could potentially have an interruption in service. And that, that is an unacceptable outcome to AT&T. Uh, we think that the city could be satisfied that, uh, I mean, we, we have told the developer and Craig, uh, Craig knows this, that we will not consider moving over to that temporary location until there's a final approved project for the trolley north, including a building permit. And, uh, and that permit is issued to Craig and his partners. And, uh, you know, we want some comfort that it's gonna get built. And uh, we certainly think that a construction bond uh, to assure the city that, that he's going to build the project would be an appropriate compromise here to, to give AT&T the knowledge that, that we can stay on that temporary, uh, temporary cell site with the condition that we proposed here. Uh, because the performance bond, or excuse me, a construction bond would assure the city that there are adequate resources, financial resources to ensure the construction of the Trolley North project. Um, and if that, you know, it, it, if we don't, uh, if we don't have the certainty that we can remain in operation, I think it's going to be. I, I think we're going to AT and T would have a very difficult time uh, agreeing to move off of where we are, and we we don't want to do that. We'd like to try to assist the developer within reason to to move on to this temporary cell site so that it can move forward with the with the overall development, which looks like a very nice project. Sure. All right. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Those are some good points. Um, Aaron, will you stop um, showing your screen just so I can see the yeah. list of people better? Sorry. It doesn't accommodate that very well. Um, all right. So we've had from Mr. Newman, I don't see any other hands from the public that would like to make a would like to speak other than Valerie, your hand is up. Did you need to would you like to speak at the public hearing as well? Or? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my mouse I my keeps going on. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Well, I will Okay. Um, Craig, did you want to make a comment for the public hearing? Yeah, I just want to want to note that our project will be bonded. We typically bond all of our major subcontractors. So our project will be bonded. Okay. All right. Thanks, Craig. All right. Um, at this time, I'm going to, well, I don't see any other hands up. This is your last chance to speak. All right. So I don't see any others. So we're going to close the public hearing. Um, I did have a question. Um, and Aaron, have you discussed the requirement for a COA just even for the tower itself versus the whole project itself? Yeah, I have walked through the COA process. I did not include that in my presentation, but a uh, okay, that's fine. A COA will be required for this request, and it's also it's a separate petition that will be right. reviewed by the HLC um, at that June first meeting. And with that petition, there is also a requirement, kind of closing the gap. Um, saying, you know, as long as all parties act in good faith, um, the certificate of occupancy for that final um, project uh, would not be issued until the, the tower is moved okay. from the, uh, the, the tennis structure is removed and the stealth facilities have been put in place. That is, you know, I've talked with the applicants and we're still working out the details of that condition to make sure that they have the flexibility they need um, and that they aren't um, left to the, um, that everyone, no one holds a stronger hand over others, but um, basically there, there's a mechanism in that request as well to okay. maintain the, the temporariness of this request. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that was clear to everybody. Um, 
here on the meeting or on the call meeting, whatever we want to call it these days. Um, okay, um, I would say like I I want to I I hear the concerns from developer. I hear the concerns from AT and T. I'm also aware of the concerns the city has. Um, a lot of these things are out of all of our control. Whether you're AT and T or your developer or the city, um, we do want to make sure that this is temporary in nature. So I do think that it's important that a timeline is placed on this. I think that one thing that might help to alleviate that is that we are saying that they can request an extension, um, and so there are there is an opportunity to add time um, onto that period of time. Obviously, we can't predict what will happen in the world, um, and obviously, the seems like development of financial world right now is. Uh, a little bit up in the air. So anyhow, uh, I'm prepared to make a motion. So I would say based on the information, the staff report, the information presented here, um, I'm going to approve petition PLM PCM 2023-00215 with the condition that the proposed facility and all associated structures must be removed from the subject site if the associated development project PLN HLC 2022-00675 is not completed within three years of the approval of this conditional use. The applicant may request a one-year extension, not less than 30 days before the end of the three-year period. And I will state that there's not going to be a limit on the number of extensions that can be requested. So um, thank you for participating in our meeting today. Uh, I'm gonna call this hearing, um, I'm gonna call this an end to this hearing. Thanks for everyone in attendance. Thanks for your hard work, Aaron. Um, and um, applicants, please work with Aaron. Uh, we'll get the record of decision out um, to you. And so hopefully we can get this um, process moving forward. Thank you. Thank you.